Hey everybody and welcome to my kitchen. Once again, I am hungry, so it's going to, uh, in fact, be a good day today um, because I am making mini Cuban sandwiches. I'm also making um, a tuna noodle casserole and we're going to get that started first so that we can talk about other things. So let's go ahead and get that water boiling and see what we see. Um, Also, I know I've been having trouble with my uh, stream lately, and uh, it's because of the way the routers are here. Hopefully this, if it's trouble this time, this should be the last time that it's trouble. But, uh, there we go. So how are you guys doing this evening? Now, you may remember that uh, last time we were here, I um, pickled some uh, turnips. We're going to use those instead of regular pickles for these sandwiches. It's going to be great. Um, although it would be nice to know if I was properly streaming or not, but I don't think I can on this setup just at the moment. So I'm going to leave it to you guys to tell me. <laughs> That said, we're going to heat this up. For the tuna noodle casserole, we're going to get some egg noodles. We are going to get two cans of tuna with the oil still in them. We are going to get butter. We're going to get peas. We're going to get cheese. Uh, I'm clumsy today. Shredded mozzarella, in fact. It's going to be lovely. So, uh, yeah. Now that's it for the casserole, which we'll get going as soon as the, uh, oh, it's over there, as soon as the water starts boiling. But for now, let's talk about the uh, real attraction for the evening. We're going to do miniature Cuban sandwiches, which we're going to do pulled pork, mustard, Swiss cheese, pickles, and I've got those pickled turnips, like I said. Um, that I pickled a few times ago, and we're going to use those. And of course, uh, I got French bread to put them on, so we're going to make them kind of a panini. And uh, we will also assemble those. But in order to get started on that, the first thing we're going to need is the pork. Let's talk about this pork. It looks wonderful because it is. I went down and visited my mother last weekend and uh, my stepdad, Tom. And uh, they cooked a great big pork roast, and this is all I have left of it, and it's going to go on some Cuban sandwiches. And uh, I've been keeping it in the fridge, and uh, mm, so good. Let's get this shredded up real quick. And uh, So when you pull pork for a sandwich, it's real easy. Now, it probably works a little better when it's warm, but that's okay. Here's the problem. You are going to get your hands dirty. Now, I have already washed my hands, and they're perfectly clean and sanitary. And a lot of times you can just take it and pull it apart, and of course this is very tender, so it's working just fine. But if you find that it's not as tender as it ought to be for just pulling it apart, you can use a fork to kind of uh, dig in there and start separating it a little bit. Separate it along the grain and it'll come apart just fine. And unfortunately, you know, this is about the most unappetizing looking part of the prep work. So if you're doing it this way, um, you know, don't, uh, don't show this part to the guests. <laughs> that being said, this is going to be wonderful. This is about the same way that you pull pork for a barbecue, by the way. Um, and, you know, people will tell you you got to pull it while it's hot, but if it is a nice, tender pork like this, it will come apart just fine cold. This is fresh out of the refrigerator. I left it sitting on my counter for a few minutes, but, I mean, it's not hot, and it's coming apart just fine. That will show you that you've got a properly cooked uh, pork. Now, I've pulled enough of that. So let me wash my hands and I'll bring you guys right back up here. Also, I should probably tie back my hair. 
and I'll do that in just a second as well. Now, what we're going to do, since these sandwiches are going to be hot sandwiches, is we're going to cook them in a pan, and we're going to press them down with a lid, since I don't have a panini maker, and I'll show you how to do that here in a bit. But first, let's get this mop tie back. I will be, well, I don't have a hair tie here, so I'll be right back. Oh wait, here's one. <laughs> there we are. Also, I've got my Save the Clock Tower shirt on. Back to the Future joke. Um, given that we're broadcasting under the Nerd Nation banner, um, I thought that was pretty appropriate. Now, after you touch yourself, your face, your hair, anything, wash your hands again. There we go. Now, that water is boiling. I can hear it, so let's put our noodles in. And also turn it down before it melts my pan. Oh, come on over here. There we go. Notice I'm extremely precise in the way that I measure my noodles. <laughs> yeah. We use the that looks about right method. There we go. And that's going to look a little boring for a minute, but I need it covered so that those cook right. Don't worry, it'll only be a minute. Now, while that does, I'm going to set this pork aside, and we're going to open up, oh, missed a piece, mm. and we're going to open up a couple of cans of tuna. Now, let's talk about this, because they're for the casserole, and I know I've done the tuna casserole before, and you guys have probably seen it, but this is tuna in oil, see, on the bottom, it's tuna in oil, and we're not going to drain the oil off. Tuna noodle casserole needs oil anyway. And so we might as well use the nice light oil in here that is already flavored like tuna. So I'm going to reach over you guys and open these cans real quick. I'm sorry. It might get a little bit loud. Alrighty, there's one. There's two. And I'll tell you, We'll be opening a third can, and it's a can of small peas. And those we will drain. Because you don't want a whole bunch of pea water in your dish. So come on over here to the sink with me. Uh-oh. Now before that, come on over here to the stove. Let's keep this from bubbling over. There you go. Y'all keep an eye on that for me while we... Uh, drain the peas. Just press in on the cap, let the water drain out of it, give it a good push. It keeps the peas from coming out, and you can see there's still water coming out of that. Well, you can see, I can hear. Um, just give it a good shake and press it down. Don't squish the peas, but press it firmly, and you'll notice it's gone about that far into it. You can peel off your lid. And all our peas are just fine. Give it a thump. Keeps them from sticking when you go to pour it. Now, let's go check on these. Well, throw this away and check on these noodles real quick. Oh, Lily! Hey! How's it going? How are you doing this evening? I'm making uh, Cuban sandwiches and tuna noodle casserole again. But, you know, mostly the Cuban sandwiches, but the casserole will keep me fed for a few more days. Uh, and it's going to be really good. Uh, how are you doing this evening? Have you been up to anything good? I'm going to go throw this away before I cut myself with it, and I'll be right back. Let's see. You're at work? Well, that could be fun. Oh, hey, Ma. How are you doing? Uh, it's good to have everybody here. I'm making food. So welcome to my kitchen, everybody. Uh, 
Where was I? Peace. Uh, yeah. So, if you're having a good time at work, good. You're making money and having fun. If you're not having a good time, don't worry. You will be home soon. <laughs> now, let's get a casserole dish. Now, let's check these noodles real quick. Now, the noodles are softening up nicely, so I am not going to uh, need them on here much longer, which means I need to be getting some butter out. Making project for the library's summer reading program. That sounds like fun, actually. What, uh, what books are on the uh, summer reading program, if you don't mind my asking? And for what age groups? I bet you any amount of money Watership Down is on it. And if it isn't, it should be. <laughs> Let's see. Catcher in the Rye, For Whom the Bell Tolls, uh, The Old Man in the Sea, all the Hemingways have to be on there. Probably something from Agatha Christie. Uh, or Arthur Conan Doyle, just for the mystery crowd. Um, either that or you're doing contemporary books, in which case I am probably going to miss all those guesses. <laughs> so what I'm doing now, and I guess you can't really see unless I hold it up, is I'm taking butter and just kind of greasing the pan with it, which is always kind of fun if you don't mind getting your hands dirty. Of course, I don't like having greasy hands, but, you know, there's a sink over there, and palm olive is a good degreaser. So, there we go. We've greased up the pan real good. Not that we really needed it, because there's oil in the tuna, but that's okay. Let's see, it's for all age groups, and it's your first year, so you don't know what books they're giving away this year. Well, I tell you, if you find anything interesting, let me know, because I'm always up for a good book. Okay, these noodles are softening up semi-decently. I'm going to turn them down and let them simmer another minute. And uh, set this butter over here with the pork. Now, we'll get this tuna out of the way, and then we're going to uh, start on the sandwiches, the paninis. Um, let me put you guys over. Well, actually, I'm going to have to drain the... Sorry, didn't mean to give anybody whiplash. I'm going to need to drain the uh, uh, noodles here in a second, which means I probably ought to move everything to one side of the sink or the other. And... Here we go. Strainer. Put it on another pan. And would you guys believe how very few left-handed oven mitts there are in the world? This one's two-sided, but uh, finding either a two-sided one or a left-handed one is actually a bit of a challenge. All right. There we go. Now, let me grab a spoon and rake the noodles off the bottom because three of them got stuck, because three of them always get stuck. And then we're going to run a little water in this to keep the stuck ones from staying stuck. <laughs> and I'll just set this over here for a minute. Now, here's the fun part. We're going to shake the water out of the noodles, okay? But before we put the noodles in the pan, we are going to add a few things. I'm still out of pepper, but maybe I'll shake it in the hopes that some comes out. A uh, little salt. Someone start making me a grocery list. Lettuce, pepper. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw a little oregano in this, because oregano is always good. And you might be asking why I'm leaving it in the pan while doing this. Well, because it's harder to shake things up in a uh, 
casserole dish than it is in this strainer. Now, I'm going to put a little olive oil on here. And bear in mind there's holes in the bottom, so don't shake it too much. But just a couple of tosses, and then we pour it in the casserole dish. And that mixes it a lot easier than having to stir it around this big square dish. Now, come here. And I will show you what we're doing. I'm going to add the peas, both cans of tuna, oil and all. Well, and of course you'll want a fork to assist in the endeavor. Here we go. Get all that wonderful tuna goodness out of there. Yes. There's one. And here's the other. Yes, that's going to be good. Now that doesn't look like much yet, and I'm not going to stir it up just yet because I need to stir in some cheese. So here we go. Here's the mozzarella that I had out earlier. I probably could have opened it before I started streaming, but hey, you know. Well prepared is not my middle name. Improvisation might be, but well prepared never has been. Well, I won't say never. I'm always decently prepared. I'm one of those people who is prepared enough for everything and anything, but occasionally wish that maybe I'd prepared just a little wee bit more. So we've got to stir this through and make sure that we get a little bit of everything, a little bit of everywhere, because you don't want a great big pocket of only noodles or only peas or only tuna. Um, great big pockets of only cheese is fine. <laughs> Speaking of which, a little more cheese, mix that in. And I'm going to mix a little more in, and then I'm going to top the thing with the last of it to bake kind of a crust on it. And of course, all the ingredients, even the tuna, are mm, yummy, are already edible, you know, and fully cooked, so you're fine. But, oh, before you put the cheese on the top, kind of push everything down so the surface is flat and it's slightly compact because you want it all to bake together. And you don't want loose bits kind of sticking up because if there are, they have a tendency to burn real bad. There we go. And I'm leaving a little bit in the bag because I'm going to pinch that out in a little blob and munch on it later. <laughs> mm. Okay. Time for the oven. And, uh, oh, let's see. Yes, don't forget to save the recipe on Discord. I will do that. Uh, in the, uh, in the uh, 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 McDuffins cooking channel uh, in uh, uh, the Bacon's uh, stream. That was so awesome of them to create that. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, try my best to put everything in there. My problem is that, as you can see, I kind of go by the pinch of this, a little bit of that, oh, that looks like the right amount of this method of cooking. And sometimes when I turn around and go to put it down on paper, it's not as easy to follow. So I'm trying to get a little better about that for their sakes. Uh, or just use recipes where it's not important. <laughs> now, I see a little bit on the side here where I don't have enough cheese down in there. So we're just going to shove some cheese in there and hope for the best. There's your cooking tip for the day. Shove some cheese in there. Hope for the best. <laughs> All right. We're sticking this in the oven. And, oh, 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 wait, wait. We're not sticking this in the oven yet. It's not going to brown properly if we do. We need Reynolds wrap. Aluminum foil. Aluminium if you're from the old country. Black pen, it's aluminium foil. We say aluminium and maths as if it were plural. Oh, 
although since the name of the language is English and they are from England, they might be more on the right than we are, but uh, I still call it aluminum. <laughs> All right. Hmm. So we're going to bake this at about 385 until it's done. Speaking of until it's done, let's set a timer for about 12 minutes so that we can check on it. Now, now comes the fun bit. We're going to make Cuban sandwiches. So, uh, let's put down a plate. And I'm going to need some Swiss cheese and pickles. Let's go get our Swiss cheese and pickles real quick. Ah, uh, now. Where did I put my Swiss cheese? Oh yeah, here it is. Where did I put my pickles? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are they? Hold, please. Um, these may or may not be good. February third, twenty eighteen. That ship sailed. You know, these all say February 2018. We're going to test them and find out. In the meantime, I actually made pickles a few streams ago. These are pickled turnips in white or in red wine vinegar. These, I know, are fresh. All right. So, here's the trick. We are going to start with... Uh, be right back. You need to... Uh, yes, the bacons are awesome. By the way, Lily... Uh, if you, uh, if you can hear me, uh, and you're still there, uh, eventually when you get back, I want you to give a shout out to the Bacons, um, and I don't know if my stream allows links or not, but, uh, the Twitch handle for, um, the Bacons is, uh, his is X the Bacon Maker, D-A-B-A-C-O-N. M A K E R and hers is blessed bacon. B L S S E D B A C O N. That's a little one. I'll replace that with a big one. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make paninis, and we're starting with bread, because that's what panini means. Um. Crack open this Swiss cheese here real quick. Uh, yeah, that's about right. We just need enough cheese on there to melt and keep everything in place. I guess I could have stacked the other halves up. I don't have lettuce. Why don't I have any lettuce? I like lettuce. All right. We're going to put down our pulled pork. And it's always important to kind of fit it on there in the right sizes and shapes so that you can completely fill up all of the surface area and you have a nice generous sandwich. You don't want someone biting into a sandwich and getting like the only three pieces of pork on one end and then the rest of the thing is just bread and lettuce or cheese or pickle or whatever we're putting on it. Say so there we go. Also if there's longer pieces try to put them in the direction where people will get the whole thing in one bite and you won't be like pulling it out long ways. If you're cooking carefully, you're thinking about how it will be eaten and not just about how to get it together. Here we go. Okay. Hmm. 
All right. Now here comes the trick. I don't know if the regular pickles, the cucumber pickles, are any good. We're gonna try mine first and see what we've got. And make sure mine came out all right, because I have not sampled these yet either. Hmm, oh yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, these are good. So, pickled turnip, or two. <laughs> I'm going to show you what else you can do. Oh yeah, these smell fine. You can also, and I will get a cutting board, you can also get a regular pickle. You get a knife that is ridiculously too big for the job. And uh, just slice that right on up. And a tiny little bit bobs. Okay, so you can put regular pickle on this, little chunklets, and we'll do that on a few. There we are. Or we get us some pickled turnip, which is also going to be really good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever had pickled turnip, but it's about the only thing that I really know how to do with a turnip that's any kind of decent that I like. There we go. Pickled turnips are always tasty. People have been pickling onions lately, too. They're really tasty. Let me check on you guys real quick. Oh, you guys are still sitting tight. For this last one, I'm going to do a mixture. It's going to be pickled turnip and standard cucumber pickles. I bet you that's going to be really, really good. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Now, here's the trick. A little dab of mustard. Because we need a little dab of mustard. Because that's what you do. We're going to use two different kinds. We've got Lars uh, Spicy Brown Mustard, which isn't really spicy brown because it's Swedish style, so it's sweet. And then just some plain old yellow mustard. We're going to mix them up. We're going to take the yellow mustard and put it on two of them. And we'll take the Swedish mustard and put it on two of them. And I say since this one sandwich is all kinds of mixed up anyway, we just also put both kinds of mustard on it. That's kind of arbitrary and not a good idea to do to any of your guests, but <laughs> for me, I think it's going to be good. All right, now we'll just top these with more cheese because we need something for them to melt to. And then the fun begins. We've got to get these in the skillets so that we can melt them into paninis. All right. Make sure the bread's facing the right way. I don't know that I have enough pieces of bread. Oh, well, we'll get more. There's a whole bag of it. Okay, come on over here with me to the stove, and we will set down our pan and start getting ready for this. Now, it'll be easier to work on a nonstick pan. I'm tempted to get my great big, uh, you know what? Let me get my big stainless steel because I'll be able to fit everything in it all at once. There we go. This is a nice pan. which is going to require a lot of butter to keep things from sticking. That's okay, because that's part of the flavoring of the sandwich. <laughs> okay.
turn this bad boy on. Now. I'll just kind of scoot the butter around a little bit. <laughs> Make sure we get a little of it everywhere. Just because what we don't want are dry spots where this can stick. I find that a little salt on the bottom of the pan also helps keep things from sticking. About like a shuffleboard table. <laughs> All right, come on over here, guys. And we are going to make some paninis. Now, get a good clean lid. And I'll show you why. Well, maybe set the lid down. This particular bread may be coming apart on us a little easier than the larger pieces would. But the little sandwiches are still fun to eat. Now, I got that too hot. There we go. There we are. Push and squeeze! <laughs> In fact, let's add a little extra weight to that. That's cast iron, that'll do it. While those cook for a second, let's check on our casserole. Uh, casserole's fine, give it a sec. Actually, I'd better take a look. I don't want anything burning. See that? They're nice and brown and delicious. And falling apart like nobody's business. <laughs> but that's okay. They're still going to be wonderful. That's kind of all there is to it on these. They're easy. Thank you. The heart-shaped lid actually came with a little uh, cooking pot. Uh, it's a little uh, stock pot. I got it uh, from Le Creuset. And uh, normally, Le Creuset is expensive. But that one was one of their B stock that was on sale for some reason. They say it had a flaw. But I have owned the thing for years. I can't find what flaw they're talking about, so... <laughs> I think the flaw on this one was Valentine's Day was over and they still had heart-shaped pots lying around, so... But I absolutely adore it. It's cute and it's fun to work with. And the point of the heart makes a really good spout for pouring things, so I really do get a lot of enjoyment and use out of the pan. And I hope nothing ever happens to it, but if it does, you can bet I'm going to go and find another one just like it. All right, so we have our little Cuban panini sandwiches here with a little bit of roast pork on the side that fell out. Well, that'll live next to my stove forever. Uh, you all know what comes next. Get a nice thick washcloth for this one. There we go. Let's 
go ahead and wipe this out real good while it's still hot so that we can get all that melted cheese off of there before it turns into coagulated cheese and never comes off just like it's doing right there don't be afraid to hit it with a scraper it's much easier to clean a pan when it's hot than it is once it's cooled off. I'm not even kidding. Always take the time to do it because you will not regret it. Plus you don't have a whole bunch of pans sitting around soaking. but it's a lot of fun. And it's still about a million degrees. Okay, so what we have now is we've got our Cuban sandwiches done. Let's clean up our counter real quick while we, oh, I guess I could turn on a light now. It's starting to get dark outside. There we go. Um, let's clean up our counter while we wait for our uh, hmm, pickles. while we wait for our um, casserole to get done. So, put away my pickled cucumbers. I might keep these just in case I want more Cubans, but these are going to be gone after this if I don't. Now, put that down there, that down there. Always put your cheese away. I know it's delicious when it gets all room temperature and half melty, but if you do that with it too many times, it starts to get hard on the edges. So, always watch out for that. Let's see here. Mm, I love that pulled pork. Put our mustards away. Again, yeah, just regular old yellow mustard. And Lars. Lars is good. Always wrap the butter back up in its wax paper to keep it from getting all hard and gross. Throw away your cheese wrappers. <laughs> so many rules. Now, normally I recycle cans, but these have like a whole bunch of oil in them and you can either wash them off and recycle them or throw them in the garbage. But don't just throw them in the recycle bin, which is not lined, covered in oil like this, because if you do, bad things happen. Very bad things happen. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I think it's probably time to check on that tuna noodle casserole in a minute, now that we've got the kitchen kind of cleaned up. But um, let's take another quick look here after I wipe this counter down at our Cubans, just because I don't think the casserole is quite finished yet, and so we'll gaze upon our other uh, feast. <laughs> Apparently they still make glass plus, but I can't find it, so I'm using this instead. So what are you guys up to this evening? After I finish this casserole, I think what I'm going to do is to throw you guys over to someone, and if you have any suggestions as to whom, uh, well that would be awesome because, you know, I'm always up for suggestions. 
Um, if not, I'll probably see if Tin is streaming, because Tin's been awesome lately. Or uh, one of the Bacons. Or I know Noisy's not going to be streaming until Thursday. Um, but if you guys get a chance, follow all of them. Uh, also, uh, the wildfire is a lot of fun. Uh, Muha is always a blast. All of them are good guys, so you know, we'll uh, we'll find someone to throw this dream over to. In the meantime, eh, why don't you guys feast your eyes on these paninis? Because they certainly are a feast for the eyes and a feast for the mouth. <laughs> Here we go. And while we do that, I'm going to check on the uh, casserole and see if it isn't done yet. All righty. So let's gently pull the... No, it's not yet. It's... Uh... Getting there, the cheese is melted, but the cheese is not brown yet. So we're going to leave that for a minute. And, uh, huh. That's probably going to go another two or three minutes. And uh, so uh, after that, we'll throw it in the broiler and brown up the top if it's not starting to brown yet, which it should be. But... Ah, uh, that said, we've got our Cuban sandwiches, and they look really good, and I am hungry. Um, but while we wait on that, why don't we figure out who we're going to throw the stream over to real quick. We've got, um, oh, Just Heated is playing, LEB. Hey, Tin is streaming. He's streaming the Gungeon. We'll probably throw it over to, uh, probably throw it over to Tin uh, this evening, just because he's been pretty awesome. To everybody for a long time, but especially lately, he's really, really getting a lot of stuff going on. So, let's see, that's making you hungry? Yes, me too. I'm, I'm actually looking at it, and it's all I can do not to just put a little face on the stream. Um, so, yeah, I think after the, uh, I think after the casserole comes out, what we'll do is we will throw it over to Tins. Uh, stream real quick and uh, let you guys watch him. It looks like he's playing Enter the Gungeon. So, <clears throat> that said, do any of you have questions for me about this evening's recipes or anything else to talk about? Anyone up to anything exciting? Anything good? Uh, Lily says she can't type today, which that's me every day. I can type fast, but I always can't type accurately. There's always a typo someplace. <laughs> of course, you try to type like 190 words a minute, and your fingers trip over each other. Disclaimer, I can't type 190 words a minute, of course. But um, that said, um, we're going to go, I guess, and check on that casserole and see if it's done. You guys ask me... Uh, questions over here in the chat. Well, if you're on YouTube, you won't see the chat over here, but if you're on Twitch, it's right over here, I promise. Um, and we're going to go check on this casserole and see if it is ready. I'm about to open the oven with no oven mitts on. So into the broiler it goes. There we go. We'll broil it on low to see if we can kind of get it seeping in down through there, the heat, without it browning too fast. But here's the thing about a broiler. Only let it go for one minute at a time. I'm serious. Raid 10? Okay, I will. 
Yeah, that will be uh, a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, oh, I tell you guys, I am having a good day. I saw a bunch of clients today, got a bunch of stuff done. I just had a shower. I took my first bike ride of the season. I only went eight or nine miles, but I'm out of shape, sue me. Um, and, you know, it's, it's great. I'm feeling good. I'm finally over my cold. I'm feeling bouncy. Uh, I'm feeling like the pigeon's tits. I have no idea what that means. Please forget I ever said it. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. Um, that said, uh, it's a great day here, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, too. Let's check on this. All right, look, that's closer to what it's supposed to look like. It's starting to harden up the cheese is. But uh, we need a little more time to start it browning and crisping. So we are going to do that. And this is not really a left-handed glove, and it's kind of thin on the back. So I need to swap it out for a different one before I burn my hand. There we go. Much better. Not as pretty, but much better. So I hope you guys are having a good evening, and it's wonderful to have all of you here in my kitchen. Thank you so much for coming by and spending some time with me. Let's uh, keep an eye on this casserole, and then we'll go raid tin. Yeah, almost. Almost. You know what? We will crank that up to high for a minute. It'll be great, trust me. Okie dokie. It says 43 seconds left, but with this we could probably trust it. Now, if you were baking something smaller or something with bread or something like that, always keep even a closer eye on it. With cheese and noodles, Probably okay, but uh, constantly looking at it's probably the right way to go. Uh, you'll notice we've been setting it for one minute at a time, and probably three minutes is um, about right for most things like this to brown up cheese and stuff like that. But you don't just want to assume that and set it for three because when cheese starts to brown, it goes from like not brown at all to oh, it's perfect to like sheet of black crusty charcoal in like eight seconds. So, oh, hang on. I've tried to boil garlic, but yeah. Bro broiling garlic bread is wonderful when you get it right. But uh, unfortunately, it goes, I mean, it goes quick. It's like you have to keep an eye on it. Cause it goes from like not quite done to exquisite to like, you know, what did this used to be? Um, all in like 10 seconds. Oh good, we're starting to get little brown spots on top of it, which means we're almost done. I'm guessing another 30 seconds. When you start to see those little tiny brown spots, the little speckles appear everywhere, that means it's almost done. Keep an especially close eye on it. That was hilarious, but yeah, I, I think I know what you're referring to, and sorry about that. <laughs> More little brown spots, always a good thing. I'll show them to you guys in a second, but well, they'll have gone from brown spots to a nice little modeling across the top that means our casserole is done. And I'll show you that so that you know what you're looking for. Um, let me show you real quick first. See those little brown spots? Yeah, those are wonderful, but that means it's got another 15 seconds or so to go. So you want them to kind of get a little more widespread, a little more interconnected, and they're going to be great. Now the timer's going off, but I know better because I just looked at the thing, so I'm counting in my head, and in another 12 seconds I'll be taking it out.
five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's check it. Oh yeah. Bingo! That's what you want right there. We're gonna turn this off and this off, and there is your tuna noodle casserole for the evening. Now, we have tuna noodle casserole, we have Cuban paninis, and uh, I'm starving, so I am gonna throw you guys over to Tim. And thank you so much, Lily, um, Mom, uh, and Mom, thanks for coming by and watching the stream as well. That was uh, awesome. Um, anyone else that's here who's lurking, I'm not going to call you out because that's not the thing to do. And plus, I love it that you guys lurk. You know, you don't have to say anything. The fact that you come by and watch the stream is wonderful. Um, so thank you so much, all of you. I am going to throw you over to Tin. So, um, you'll have a wonderful evening and thank you again. Take care. Yes, I am a lefty. Uh, I am in fact a left-hander. So, uh, to answer your question, I'm going to throw you guys over to Tin now. Take care. <laughs> Bye.